Did you? So in a, in a nutshell, the, the idea of this presentation is to uh, say, well, we, we build a model and uh, what's happening when you modify a little bit the model, you change some parts, you reuse just the same model, uh, the workflow it represents, and uh, you may change, first of all, just the inputs, obviously, you may apply a specific model to a different area. And, or you may refine your model by including different uh, steps into your workflow and uh, so the idea is to say what will happen about the inter output uncertainties and one solution I propose here is a meta-propagation which is a simpler obviously, version than, than what you would do in a, in a full sensitivity or uncertainty analysis with uh, just running the full model or doing an emulator runnings but uh, that may be quite useful and these people use only the metadata about the data and the processes and the idea as well is uh, in the spirit of the model web is you can maybe in the future build your workflow <coughs> as you discover the process and the data sets and you can straight away have an indication of what kind of uncertainties in the output you're going to get so now you can go <laughs> <laughs> so this is part of the EuroGels uh, project, uh, which uh, deals with um, multidisciplinary interoperability, uh, with forest, drought and biodiversity. And so potentially the, the birth of the models going across these disciplines, and that's another aspect of these workflows as well, is as you are an expert in one specific field, you, you are not an expert in the other field. And so if you want to use the processes or the data sets of the other people, uh, you may uh, benefit from this kind of tool to have an idea before asking them. So the already said, in fact, that the motivation is about integrating modeling. So uh, taking into account maybe refining your model as much as you can or maybe as, as much as the time you've got. But uh, so that means uh, improving any part of your uh, existing workflow and so the aim uh, of, of this uh, meta propagation would be obviously the quality assessment of what you are doing in, uh, in building of, uh, more sophisticated models and the means is uh, uh, within integrable spatial data infrastructure is to use as much as possible uh, st existing standards uh, metadata for data and processes. So, what is the time? Yeah. Uh, so, this is an example which already dates quite a lot. It's from 1997, Geo Okara, where there is a, a vegetation evolution model, in fact, but it's not striking at the, the first time you see it. And uh, there's a drawing representation which can be very helpful to uh, discuss and communicate with different experts, for example in different fields of soil erosion, vegetation model, and uh, weather data, for example. So the idea is to reuse this kind of model in different settings, and also to have the uh, user annotation, maybe, for uh, the usefulness of using this particular model or particular sub-model of it. And uh, the problem when you apply this kind of work so in uh, at different scales, so you want to have an idea of the uh, propagated uncertainties by the upscaling of these kind of models or downscaling it, depending on what you come. So the whole about uh, quantifying the uncertainties of the workflows or at least of the outputs. It's uh, well maybe the, the, the uncertainties of the outputs are the uncertainties of the workflow, but also some subparts as well. Maybe. So the list of issues is about uh, sharing uh, the representation of such a uh, maybe a big model, uh, exchanging formats so via the web, for, and so that's the same aspect of publishing, uh, so uh, be able to discover and to analyze the semantics of these models. Uh, the second aspect is running them. 
and that may be an issue, but first of all, uh, you want to uh, estimate the usefulness in the decision-making process. And so that's, that's the assessment. So the, the first standard is a BPMN, the Business Process Model Notation, uh, managed by the OMG, so that's pretty much a standard. And so you can see that you, you uh, link tasks in the boxes with a data set of input and output, and we in the flow with a start and an end. And you can, as you can see in this uh, imaginary greenness model, a completely silly model, but maybe so, I don't know. And you can refine your model, where do you press here? You can refine by uh, adding new data sets and maybe new steps in, into the estimation of the, your greenness. Intensity. So this is a GeoOpera workflow when you translate it into the BPMN with the <laughs> Enterprise Architect uh, software. But there are some free available uh, and open source uh, BPMN editing tool uh, which you can use. And then you can see a bit more maybe that there are three main uh, submodels in, in this uh, ground condition. <coughs> and uh, first of all, Graphically, and you can export that to exchange in uh, XPDL format, which is stands for XML Processes Definition Language or Description Language. That's managed by the Workflow Management Coalition. So that's pretty much a standard as well. So there is a, a total uh, equivalence between the BPMN and the XPDL encoding. Uh, not so total with the BPL uh, translation, but most. Uh, of the tools translating directly BPMN to BPL or XPL to BPL can be used to run your workflow in a BPL engine but there are also some XPL uh, workflow engine uh, available like Together Workflow Engine and uh, Hintra uh, Sharp and some others, if you, if you go to the web page by the XPL you see lots of uh, implementation of the standard so the, the, um, the advantage of the XPDL is it allows extensions of the encoding into the XML. Uh, so like they call it the vendor extensions. Uh, so in some ways for us, we can uh, extend to describe the metadata attached to any component of the workflow. So the, the tasks, the, the artifacts, which are the data objects for us here. Uh, but also all sorts like semantic, maybe a web 2.0 semantic quality tagging, which may be useful to propagate in terms of the propagation of the metadata, but not of the institute design. And uh, here, that's uh, the extended attribute mechanism. You can use the namespace or without namespace. So that's just a little technical aspect. And we are. Uh, we use this uh, extension possibility for this tool we call MetaPoot, uh, metadata, meta propagation uh, of uncertainty tool, uh, where we can uh, use the standards for uh, data quality and uh, process quality. In fact, there is no standards for process quality. That's where we come now. And to uh, fully describe in terms of the quality uh, the metadata about quality of the work in, embedded in the work group. So the standard we are using in the, comes from the ISO, uh, the ISO 19113 mainly, but, um, and well, all, of them, all of them which are uh, removed uh, very soon in the 19157. Uh, so basically the principle, the measures, and uh, the assessment, and the registration as well. Uh, and for the value you can use, which, which was a bit like some part missing in fact in the, in the ISO, you can use what they uh, didn't describe, or you can use maybe uncertain health uh, to uh, describe the values of the uh, quality you measured. But for the processes there is uh, nothing at the moment. So what we did is we use uh, the concept, the principle of data quality to derive with the five, the, the five main elements and sub-elements, uh, we derive some uh, kind of matching uh, quality element we could apply for processes. 
and uh, some elements as well. So the matching of the idea is maybe to use them in a propagating way as well, but so also that some of them are, are, are fully independent of the, of the meta propagation. But the one we are interested in here it would be just the thematic error propagation, which matches the, the thematic error accuracy and the quantitative attribute error propagation or accuracy, the matching element between data and processes. So we derive the process quality XSD, which uh, pretty much is the same as the, as the one for the data quality. But there are some differences in the scope, because you may need to, to define uh, a from and a to. You will see a bit later what it means. And the result, which can accept a different type, so maybe instead of just a value, it would be a more a function, which can be embedded in a web processing service. So about the uncertainty now, how do we really meta propagate it? Uh, it's the end of the talk and it didn't say anything about that. <laughs> so, um, so the uncertainty analysis uh, uh, describe uh, and account the uncertainty of the outputs and describe as well how much is due to the input. So, so for example the, um, <coughs> the partial sensitivity um, index here, which, uh, which is the percentage of the explained Viability of the outputs coming from, so is that a user from, coming from the uh, variable x1. So, to, to do this stuff, uh, which has been described uh, before, you, you do a, a sampling, Monte Carlo, etc., and you derive the, the output probability, which uh, inform about the data quality. So, that's when you run the models many times. Uh, but without running the model, uh, when I say the model, I say the full model, because obviously you will have to do that at some point to describe the process, uh, or single or atomic process. But uh, once this is done for... Um, so, the, so the answer the question was, the, the yes is answered the question, can we do that without running the model, the full model? And uh, the answer is yes, using metapropagation, which trying to combine all the metadata quality elements in, uh, in some simpler functions to allow uh, the regulation of some estimate of the application. So here, so we are interested in uh, the variance, for example, of y, and uh, it is obviously linked to a different of the different variability of the inputs. So we use uh, the quantitative attribute accuracy and the quantitative attribute error propagation. So what is it behind this quantitative error propagation is in fact a variance transfer function, which uh, actually when you do a sensitivity analysis, you have all the elements there to derive these functions. But usually what you derive from this experiment, you derive just a subtly or several indices or about sensitivity, but you could, uh, you could build this function. The transfer function, and you see already that the transfer function they are going to be able to propagate certain values. So that's so simple. So that's what we propose here for the variance transfer function for the uh, quantitative error propagation, and you can, uh, to match a little bit sensitivity uh, parameters, have different different uh, measures. So uh, all that is encoded in uh, functionals, uh, which can be captured in a web processing service. And for the moment, we, uh, we demonstrated uh, just a one-to-one -one, uh, um, propagation, obviously, like, like the indices. But we can uh, extend that to much <coughs> more. So uh, in fact, that's the end. Uh, we can, the idea now is, we've got this metaphor propagation principle which can be embedded into a web processing service just to uh, have the meta propagation, or it can be embedded into a, a full workflow service which would run as well the web. So that's uh, the end. Thank you. Thank you, Didier. Questions for Didier, yeah. Uh, there's a risk of not having one for all aspects. I just wonder when you say uncertainty, uh, what sort of thing is it a probability? Is it a 46? Is it a particle? Well, then, what is it actually? Well, it, it, 
Here I described the principle and I illustrate it with just the variance. So the uncertainty of the data would be measured by the variance. And we propagate this variance. But it could be uh, for the completeness, for example, it, it's a rate, a rate of agreement, of, uh, uh, of omission or commission, you know, there is a rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you can propagate as well this rate if you've got a uh, proper conflation loss uh, estimate. But, uh, but some of them obviously are, are going to be difficult to meta propagate. But basically, it's matching what the ISO uh, uh, data quality principle are, are talking about. Yeah, yeah um, if I understood so correctly, the, the metadata propagation, what we're doing is taking the metadata quality values, the quality results, which uh, from 1994, and putting some variance measure on it and, and pushing it forward. What happens when you don't have a quality result from some of the measurements? Obviously, you cannot do anything. This is supposing that every data set or every process you can discover on the web, if it's on the web, but every data or process you are putting in your workflow would have some metadata about the quality of this data and the quality of the process. So, as measures following the ISO. For example, 9157 uh, allows. Whereas 9114 actually requires a quantitative result uh, for each of the data classes, 9157 allows a descriptive class, and you can't use for some functions like meteorology where you don't have any. Yes, yes, yes. Some of them were purely descriptive, obviously, would not be propagated uh, at least in this way. Maybe in uh, some other ways. We're using the textual functional analysis. Well, Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Didier. So, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so if we uh, thank Didier.